Hello, uh, welcome to my presentation on the geospatial analysis to estimate stream flow and ungauged streams for potential microhydroelectric power. This study was done for the Energy Center at Appalachian State University and was supported by them. I was guided by Dr. Jeff Colby and Dr. Derek Martin, and this study was part of my um, geography master's degree program which I completed in May of 2021. Uh, just to introduce the um, concepts and background, sort of the rationale for this project, the Appalachian State Energy Center receives requests for um, estimates on the feasibility of installing microhydroelectric generation units from um, they receive the request from property owners who are interested in installing this form of uh, renewable energy. So the uh, perspective that I take in answering um, or uh, yeah, just addressing this issue of estimating stream flow and estimating power output is out of this perspective that um, there's a regional relationship between the physiography and stream flow of streams within that um, similar physiography. Um, so streams within similar physiography likely have similar stream flow depending on the drainage area that contributes to them. Um, the analysis that I do is uh, ultimately a re linear regression analysis of stream flow statistics and um, the associated drainage area from um, hundreds of gauges. The result of this study is an estimate of stream flow statistics based on drainage area and an estimate of electric output using the stream flow statistics. And I condensed the, this work into a guide that somebody can use to complete this, um, these methods as a remote assessment for any person of interest. And so the key benefits of this are that it provides a, um, a more robust um, kind of data driven answer to the question than a single visit snapshot would of somebody doing a site visit to assess um, whether or not an installation would be beneficial and it also saves on the costs of doing a field visit. So here's an overview of micro hydropower generation, um, similar to a larger hydroelectric um, implementation. Water is sent through um, some pipe or canal through, uh, or sorry, down a hill and to a generation turbine, right? Um, in these smaller systems, these micro hydro systems, there's an intake point, some type of um, catch basket that filters out leaves and things, and that catches the, the water, diverts it to the pen stock that sends it downhill to the turbine, and that's hooked up to battery or whatever's using the power. Um, and so this question, how much stream flow is delivered to the intake point? That's the key question. It's going to uh, you know, drive how much power you can get out of it. And a single visit gives you a snapshot. However, if you use the uh, data from a stream flow record, then you have a better idea of any fluctuations throughout the year. Key questions I answer are how to estimate stream flow and engage streams. Um, I say that you can use drainage area and stream flow from uh, similar streams to estimate that of uh, estimate stream flow of a stream of interest that is within the uh, same physiographic classification boundaries. And that is how I define similar streams because those that uh, fall within the same regional physiographic classification boundary. And there are uh, many of those types of classification boundaries and I'll review those later. Um, I'll review some of them later, ones that I use.
Um, and so how to obtain data of these similar streams. I was able to find this um, nationwide gauge data set that's curated by USGS scientists that has stream flow um, attached to each gauge point. And so the key assumption is that stream flow of any given stream is more similar to stream flow of streams within the same regional physiography classification than streams that are outside of that classification. Um, I use spatial, hydrological, and power data in this. Um, I use that USGS gauge point data set, regional classification boundaries, hydrological data, um, in part from the USGS data, and then also from the Appalachian State Apocala Research Group um, data set from the upper south fork of the New River, where they have a um, watershed monitoring program. I also use power um, output data from a micro hydro um, site visit the energy center representative conducted. And my methods are I use the different um, regional boundaries to select different gauges. And then of those gauges, I do a regression analysis between the stream flow statistics and drainage area. And I use those um, regression equations to estimate stream flow based on drainage area. And then I use the stream flow estimate alongside um, head, which is just the difference in elevation, to calculate a wattage estimate. And then I evaluate that with this power output data. So this data set and this data set are used as evaluation measures in this study. So an overview of the um, USGS point uh, locations of gauges. Uh, this was compiled in 2003 and uh, multiple attributes are attached to each point location. Um, some key criteria they use as a first pass to filter this before I do anything else with it. Or I filter out any of the gauges that has, have less than a 25 year record. And I filter out or I yeah, filter out any that have an inactive site status, and I filter out any that are not reviewed or that don't have reviewed records. Um, so this is the attribute table of the gauge data set. The key fields are the drainage area in square miles, the number of days in the record, which is what I based the 25 year uh, record limit on, and then these percentile um, statistics right here. So you can read this as um, 43 cubic feet per second is um, met or exceeded 25% of the time. And so that would mean 75% of the time, 43 is definitely exceeded. So, and by of the time, I mean of this many days um, in the record. So there are this many daily averages of stream flow values that are um, used to um, generate these stream flow percentiles. So this is the first regional boundary that I use. It was developed by Finneman in 1928, and it is a way of describing the Appalachian Blue Ridge. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. Um, this is by Bailey. He calls these eco regions. It was developed in 1980 for the USDS Forest or USDA Forest Service, and this region uh, represents the Blue Ridge. And this Omernix eco region um, was developed and used by the US EPA in um, 1987. And this region represents the Blue Ridge. You can see it's a little more detailed and less of a um, smooth polygon. And so I think that each of those uh, would ultimately select gauges that have similar stream flow. 
Um, however, their boundaries were kind of um, a little different. And so I, I say, well, maybe the conglomeration of them gets it right for the Blue Ridge and can get it, give us all the gauges that might have similar statistics for the Blue Ridge. And so I, I merged them to create this boundary. Um, and then this other type of selection criteria that I use are these hydrologic landscape regions. These are USGS scientists that um, developed these in 2004. And so these are different watersheds that are coded one through 20. Um, and one through 20 represents a, um, a watershed type or hydrologic landscape type. Um, and type number 16 cor corresponds with um, or overlaps or App State's campuses and the surrounding area. So I use that in the study. And so all of these red ones are the ones coded number 16 for similar atmospheric water exchange, movement of groundwater, movement of surface water. Um, I also look at climate because climate's a key factor in stream flow. And so I sought to find the climate classification that was most representative of the Blue Ridge. And I uh, ended up using these two um, classification or these two types within the classification scheme. And uh, this is the Köppen Geiger is the classification scheme. And this um, scientist Beck produced a uh, 2018 update based on this range of precipitation and temperature data. And so that was my source for the, um, the, the boundaries of this climate classification. This table gives an overview of the results of my selection criteria. Um, within this blue block, um, each of these four were single pass selections, meaning that um, only one polygon was the um, selection criteria that produced this number of gauges. It had, um, you know, this was the smallest drainage area. That was the lar largest drainage area of the gauges within this sample size. These in the green block are um, a multi-pass selection criteria. So I use the landscape region number 16 and then um, the combination of both of the climate classification um, types to uh, select this sample of gauges. Um, so I use HOR 16 and the climate as I did before and then applied the Omernick Blue Ridge boundary and produced, you know, selected this sample of gauges. And this sample results from that merged polygon. And this sample is the result of the merged polygon passed or the, the gauges selected from the merged polygon and then gauges selected from that based on the intersection with HR 16. And so moving on, after I selected um, a sample of gauges, I plotted um, the log of each stream flow percentile um, versus the drainage area in square miles for that gauge. So each point right here represents a gauge and its associated percentile stream flow statistic and drainage area. Now the uh, line of best fit shows the linear regression um, of these variables and it's described by um, this equation. So for, for one of these lines, so I use five equations um, from this one table and this one table corresponds to one selection criteria. So there are eight of them and um, you know, eight times five is 40 different equations that I'm using. So this is the 
um, resulting R squared values of the linear regression equations. Um, you can see that the best R squared values is probably from this one right here, that selection criteria. Uh, however, I realized that R squared really just assesses, assesses how well the distribution um, you know, aligns to that line of best fit. Uh, however, it doesn't tell you how good of a job that equation does at producing a stream flow estimate. So that's why I have to use this evaluation data set from MathAqua. I um, obtained data from the Winkler Creek zone, and this creek is near Boone. Um, I found out through um, data, data analysis and some R and Python scripts that I wrote that um, each of these years had less than 25% of the record missing. Uh, sorry, less than 2% of the record missing. And so in R and Python, I did um, checks for any duplicates in values. And um, these, this data was recorded in 15 minute intervals. Um, so I was able to work with that kind of time series. And I use a PyCharm IDE and uh, pandas as kind of my, my key package to um, do a lot of this analysis in. And I generated reports on it, um, statistics about, just descriptive statistics about the, um, basically how complete the record is. And I also produced plots of the um, hyd annual hydrographs, a common x-axis. And so this is a, um, a 2010 to 2016 uh, discharge hydrograph. So key point that I uh, skipped over, the sound in the stream records gauge height. And for that um, sound site, there is a rating curve developed by um, obtaining um, basically stream speed and um, the profile at the bottom of the creek and it lets you calculate um, a relationship between discharge and the gauge height. So basically I used all of that field work from a previous graduate student and Dr. Martin to um, be able to estimate discharge. So this just is a, um, uh, a plot showing uh, you know six years of data for, at the site as it was um, obtained from the zone. So you can see that there's an error here, or what appears to be one, it's a very high value, but I marked all of the missing values with red. Um, so 2012, 2014, and then 2015 had the most complete records, so I used them. And um, you can just see their, their hydrographs there. Um, a key part of this was using um, a R package from USGS called Water Data, and it has the function fill miss, which allows you to um, produce estimates for the missing data points that you have so you can bridge the gap. Um, and then the, the final thing I did with this evaluation data set was get the uh, flow percentile statistics so that I could compare it with my estimations. Um, a key tool that I used was the online tool um, stream stats from the USGS. It allows you to um, click on a point in a stream and it will produce multiple statistics. The key thing I was interested in was its ability in giving me a drainage area um, delineated polygon that has a corresponding drainage area calculated for you. And so I did that for this, this zone site and found that 2.7 square miles contributes to it. So I, I um, plugged that 2.7 square miles into the regression equations that I've calculated previously and um, produce these estimates for, and, and you know it's driven 
from the gauges selected with each of these criteria. So then I compare that to these values that actually came from the Wink Horse Creek sown data. And the yellows are, um, you know, po high positive percent errors, the reds are negative percent errors, the greens are the um, closest to zero, basically. Um, so the best performing with absolute average error um, for each of the five percentiles was this um, final selection criteria here. And this shows you what that criteria was. This light pink was the merged three Blue Ridge layers, which was the first pass to select gauges. And then from that gauge selection, I selected those gauges intersecting with landscape region number 16. The next step was to estimate power output. So I um, found the test site that a previous energy center representative used and digitized the drainage area for it using stream stats and then in Google Earth I um, compared the intake to the outtake point and found there was a 30 foot drop and um, I used that drainage area first to calculate the flow estimate and reduce that by 17 percent um, so that I could leave 17 percent in the stream for environmental flow to keep um, flora and fauna functioning um, as needed for ecological reasons. And so once I have the estimate, the moderated estimate that I intend to use, uh, which is right here in gallons per minute, I plug that into this equation. Um, this is stream flow, this is head. This came from the energy center and this equation comes from the Hydro Learning Center, an online site. And they produce, or they incorporate um, some like system inefficiencies into their equation. And so you see that these are the, the ranges that we're looking at for each of the percentiles that are fairly similar. Um, the key part of this graph that we're interested in, since this was a June test date, uh, low flows typically occur in June, so we're interested in the lower percentiles. So we would expect it to fall somewhere between 81 watts produced and um, 288 watts produced at any given point in time. As a matter of fact, when this test was conducted, the device read 96 watts output from the stream with um, a 30 foot head and a uh, 500 foot pen stock diverting um, water from this intake point down to the generation site of, or the, yeah, the generation unit on this mobile um, contraption. And this just shows a hydrograph of a um, stream in the region, just to show you that base flows are low in June. So to wrap up, the drainage area of the uh, best performing gauge data set, so the, the smallest drainage area was 27.6. And this is larger than the evaluation data set drainage area that I had. So that's a caveat there. Um, perhaps it would perform even better if I tested this on a larger um, drainage area. Uh, another caveat was that the record length and, um, and kind of like temporal distance or separation. Um, so the USGS data had 25 years of record or more and the Evaluation data was only three years, so there's a little bit of a disadvantage there. Um, you know, just in short, in uh, yeah, in length of, of the records. And then they're also offset temporally. 2003 was the last record 
of the USGS data and the first record of the evaluation data was nine years after that. So perhaps some better evaluation data would show this as a better performing estimation process. Um, some other improvements I'll look at are uh, finding a better gap filling method for evaluation data. And then I'll look at uh, data from other water groups. Perhaps they could provide another evaluation, another test for this method. And then I would look into more extensive um, selection criteria variations. So looking at other ways to kind of slice and dice the USGS gauge data set based on regional um, polygons. And then I would also like for the USGS gauge data set to be updated because it was last compiled and updated in 2003. And, you know, with that many gauges, it's just a, a, a real wealth of gauges and statistics, a real wealth of information. Um, so to conclude, overall, this was a power estimation success. I was able to provide the energy center with the process, with the guide that they needed to produce a data-driven um, remote estimation, um, you know, power estimate output. And the, um, you know, it was, I validated that with a test that they ran, found that it lied within the low range of my estimate, that, which also corresponds to the season, to the dry season. And the methods in the study were compiled and presented to the Energy Center for use in the future. Thank you for listening. I would appreciate any questions. I'll try to answer them.